We're jumping right into our big story tonight because it's one a lot of you have been asking about. It's running all the time, so we got right on it. It's another political ad fact check. This one against incumbent Republican Lori Chavez Doremer of Oregon's 5th Congressional District. The ad accuses her of repeatedly voting against Social Security. It comes from the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee working to get Democrats elected. So let's start by watching the first part of the ad so that we're all on the same page here. Social Security, it's America's contract with the middle class. You pay into it every paycheck, but will it be there when you retire? The congressional record shows Lori Chavez Doremer voted 26 times against Social Security and Medicare, 26 times. Yeah, how about that? Well, that's a really explosive claim. For national politicians, you gotta understand, Social Security is the third rail of politics. You touch it, you die. So if she really did vote 26 times against that, it would be huge. But this is such a surprising allegation that even when I asked the Dreamer campaign about it, they said they had no idea what the Democrats are talking about here. And you know what? I believe them. It took some time, but I dug into it and I did find out where it's coming from. And in my opinion, Democrats are playing games with this one. Let me explain. Lori Chavez Dreamer took office in early January of 2023 after being elected in November of 2022. At the end of her very first month in office on January 31st, the congressional record shows that Doremer cast a vote with her fellow Republicans. The vote came at the end of debate over Resolution 75 sponsored by Republicans. It dealt with COVID and the public health emergencies as well as requiring a study on federal agencies using work from home policies. Near the end of the debate, Democratic Representative Jim McGovern of Massachusetts rose to make the following statement. Madam Speaker, if we defeat the previous question, I will offer an amendment to the rule to ensure that none of the bills in this rule take effect unless it is certified that they do not decrease Social Security benefits. Now, I know that sounds like a bunch of legal language, but what he's saying is a vote no on this thing that we're debating so that we can next vote yes on my statement about Social Security. That's what he's trying to get everybody to do, vote no. But Republicans hold a majority in the House and the winning vote was yes, not no. Chavez Doremer, a Republican, voted yes with her Republican colleagues in the majority. And because of that, the proposal that the representative, Representative McGovern, wanted to vote on instead, that one stating that Social Security benefits must be protected, well, that did not get a vote. They moved on to something else. And so that is what the folks who created the attack ads are using as one of the many times that Doremer voted against Social Security and Medicare even though the wording of that initial proposal had nothing to do with Social Security or Medicare. Jim Moore, a political science professor at Pacific University, says it's an age-old trick that goes back maybe 40 years. Remember Newt Gingrich? Uh, guess what happens when you put a PhD in Congress. So he was there in Congress. He was the leader of the minority, but he wasn't the head of the minority. Republicans have been in the minority for 40 years. So as he's moving up in the, the leadership of the minority in the late 80s and especially into the early 90s, he started figuring out these kinds of techniques. Ah, when the Democrats are voting on something that they're going to vote on on party lines, we can put things that we want in there. They'll vote no and we can campaign on that. And so it's just grown over the times. This is 40 plus years that we've been seeing this kind of thing. The kind of thing that people may really remember is remember the Republican House a decade ago voted dozens of times to repeal Obamacare. Did it ever have a chance of passing? No, because it would go to the Senate and they were going to vote against it. But they're, they're piling things up saying, look, I voted to stop this horrible program 53 times or whatever it was. Um, and so it, 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 it's a technique. Newt Gingrich developed, has been growing over time, and it's now used almost as a sport just to set up ads for the election year. I don't know about you, but I find this stuff fascinating. You might find it infuriating because here we are in an election year, and that's exactly how these votes are being used. Similar votes followed during Chavez Dreamer's entire first year in Congress in 2023. Here's another one. On May 23rd, the House was debating a Republican-backed resolution that dealt with fentanyl, the EPA, heavy truck engine rules, and student loan debt. During that debate on the resolution, Representative Teresa Ledger-Fernandez, a Democrat from New Mexico, rose to say this. 
Mr. Speaker, if we defeat the previous question, I will offer an amendment to the rule to provide for consideration of a resolution that states that it is the House's responsibility to protect and preserve Social Security and Medicare for our future generations and reject any cuts to these essential programs. But once again, Dreamer voted with her Republican colleagues and the previous question, the resolutions they were debating, well, those passed. And because of that, the amendment to the rule that Rep. Ledger Fernandez wanted to add that what she said about Social Security and Medicare, well, that did not get a vote. They just moved on to something else. And so again, the creators of the attack ad against Dreamer counted her yes vote for that original resolution, the thing that they were debating, as a no vote for Social Security and Medicare. It was interesting as I started to dig into it because when I just hear the ad, I'm thinking there's going to be a vote to yeah. reduce Social Security. And she's going to say yes or no. But it's nothing like that. No, no, it's never an up or down vote. And that's the way Congress works now. So many things are buried in there because they're, they're in these clumpy bills. Um, there's, there's so many things are buried in there. So when you vote for something, you might actually be voting against something at the same time, just because of the way the amendments work and things like that. So unless you're a parliamentarian or you're sitting there watching exactly what's happening, all that subtlety is lost. The politicians know that, their campaigns know that, the, the, the big contributors know that. So they just use those nuances to make it into a sledgehammer. Now I have lots of other examples. One from November of last year, it was ready to go as well, but you know what, I think you're getting the idea. It's the same strategy over and over again. Debate a bill, a Democrat rises and says, if we defeat this current bill, I've got a resolution to protect Social Security and Medicare, but the initial bill passes due to the Republican majority and the creators of the attack ad counted that as yet another vote by Dreamer against Social Security and Medicare. And it feels like with this one, it is the thinnest, thinnest margin of technical accuracy. And for most of the people at home, it's not accurate. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is it is on its face, not accurate. On legal legal terms, it is accurate. So, you know, look at it as you may. Anytime you say somebody is directly attacking Social Security, unless they're going out there and saying, here's a bill that is going to actually reduce the benefits of people who now have Social Security, they're not attacking Social Security. Even when people say they are going to reduce Social Security, they're saying for people who begin getting Social Security in 35 years, it's not now. <laughs> right, because it's Republicans, a third Democrats. rail. Yeah, it's a third rail of politics, right? Yeah, it's the third rail of politics. And why is it important? Because people over the age of 65 are the group that turns out at the highest rate. So Medicare, Social Security, those are the things that you hit on if you're trying to get that voting group to move. A quick internet check reveals that Dreamer has said she supports Social Security and Medicare, by the way, telling the New York Times way back when she was running for office in October of 2022, absolutely not. She'd been asked if she would support cuts to Medicare and Social Security as a way to rein in federal spending. Cutting those programs is not where I, as a Republican, see myself. I want to make sure that we can fill those coffers. So let's come back full circle. The question is this. Did Lori Chavez Dreamer vote 26 times against Social Security and Medicare? No, not directly. At best, this ad is highly, highly, highly misleading. And I suspect many of you now think it's just flat out false. As the professor said, both Democrats and Republicans do play this game and have for years, but it's the Democrats in the spotlight for this one.